I'm Amber Hardman, welcome back to Nat Chat. I'm joined here by Michael O'Neill, who is part of the National Seniors Australia. Welcome back, Michael. Great to be here. Now, um, I'd just like to know uh, a little bit more about um, the community's attitude towards ageing. What, what do you think that, you know, some of, the, some of the myths and things out there about older people are? Mm -hmm. um, look, I, I think um, one of the core issues that we as a community have to deal with mm -hmm is around um, our attitude and particularly pigeonholing um, older Australians. So too much of um, um, attitudes towards older Australians is driven by the date on the calendar. Yeah. So you've reached an age, so therefore you're pigeonholed into something. Um, at various times, people are then pigeonholed into being past the use-by date, to put it bluntly. Yeah. Um, and that really does impact on people's lives. If you think about it, um, the people in their 50s and increasingly in their 40s, in fact, uh, face really significant discrimination in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So uh, once you, you've reached a point in your life, your card is stamped as being not, not suitable for progression yeah. beyond a point. So how do you think um, employers these days, are, are, what's the difference in between a, the treatment of, you know, maybe a, a younger employee that's, you know, putting a, a job application in and someone that's, you know, possibly over 50 and putting that job application mm -hmm. in? How do you think mm -hmm. that an employer would be um, viewing those two well, all yes. the evidence to us and, and through through case studies, mm -hmm. folk who've come to us and put their hand up and said there's a real issue here with the way I'm being treated, mm -hmm. is that um, if you put your age on the on your application um, and you're in your 50s, your prospects of getting to the next stage mm -hmm. will be reduced. So people are actively trying to avoid putting the age on, yeah. hoping they get to the interview stage. Once you get to the interview stage, I guess... The experience, and this is backed up by some research we've had done, mm -hmm. suggests that the, the, the human resources, the HR area of the business, tends to have a bias towards younger people. Um, and that arises in, in a couple of ways. Um, the HR system operates generally with a younger person being involved in the initial culling okay. interview stage. Mm -hmm. And younger people um, have uh, bring with them limited experience but um, I guess a particular emphasis on the currency of language. So yeah, they definitely. focus on what the, the trends are and the languages of the day based on their own training. Mm -hmm. So you will find at interview, for example, uh, younger people might be asking you about, um, Amber, what are your career plans? Yeah. Um, how do you see your career unfolding over the next 20 or 30 years? Which is quite a legitimate question. Mm -hmm. um, the difficulty is if you, Amber, are sitting there interviewing me, and I'm in my 50s, and you ask me, well, what are your career plans, Michael? How do you see your next 20 or 30 years going forward? Well, clearly that's a different question for me than it is for you. So that kind of, that provides then a basis for some bias against older workers mm -hmm. in the way they're treated by the HR system. And then that, provide, that just reinforces the challenge for people to obtain employment or to obtain um, advancement in their careers once they age. What, um, what kind of things is your organisation doing to kind of, um, you know, help older uh, employees, you know, maybe gain employment or, mm, mm. you know, what changes are you kind of trying to promote? Well, certainly we're looking at um, uh, the government, um, the federal government recent, the last 12 months um, under pressure, um, mm -hmm. you know, with suggestions from groups like ours, have changed the age discrimination legislation to make it uh, the test a bit simpler. It, mm -hmm. it now has a test that's the same as um, sex discrimination or race discrimination where previously it was a much higher test. So that's a starting yeah. point. So we'll, we're promoting that as an important uh, change. We're also about to launch some further research that looks at employment issues facing mature age um, Australians. And then the third part is around highlighting to uh, the, the uh, corporate sector and the trade union movement and to governments generally that um, discriminating against people on the basis of age has a whole lot of consequences. It, it prevents people participating in the workplace. Um, it, the, the consequence of that, of not being able to participate in the workplace, flows through to people for the rest of their lives. If you're a 55 year old and you become unemployed, you will be unemployed um, at least twice as long as anybody younger than you. You'll be unemployed three times longer than a person in their 20s. Oh, yeah. The consequence is in your 50s, you should be at that time in your life when your kids are off your hands, your mortgage is paid off, putting money away for your retirement. Become unemployed, you don't have that capacity. So it impacts on you for the rest of your life compared to a younger person, let's say in their 20s, who uh, may become unemployed, they've got the rest of their life to recover. So there are a whole lot of consequences 
around people becoming unemployed yeah. and the discrimination they face. What are some of the more positive aspects in employing someone of a more mature age? Um, again, um, research based and, and, and certainly emerging more and more from employer groups that older, older workers are more reliable, mm -hmm. um, they're more loyal, um, they, they provide greater ownership of their work, uh, they have fewer sickies. Um, right. So those positive benefits, they're more productive, those positive benefits um, I think have been understated in the past and they'll be the kind of things that will be part of a program we're, we're launching that will make employers particularly, also trade unions and governments, more aware of that positive side that, um, that older workers can provide. Yeah, definitely. Now, I'd just like to know a little bit about how um, your organisation is actually um, supporting the community. Um, I, I understand that, um, that you do provide um, some funding to the community. Um, in what capacity do you do that? We, we operate a, um, a thing called the National Seniors Foundation, mm -hmm. which is a, a philanthropic arm. It was an initiative of the group to try and put money back into the community. Uh, and I guess most simply at the moment, it, it could be an example of um, um, a local community here in Victoria, um, Bendigo or Ballarat, might have a local hospice or a aged person's home and we might have a branch in the area, we have got a branch in the area. So the branch would go along and talk to the, the local hospital and, and identify what a need might be and maybe it's a you know, special wheelchair or a hoist or, um, or pillows, to, that um, pressure pillows that assist people who are, who are stuck in bed for long yeah. times. Um, they would then come to us, uh, to the foundation, to our foundation mm -hmm. and say look this, this is the situation. Um, we need to spend four thousand dollars here as the case may be um, we're prepared as a local community or a local branch to put up some money yes. um, and the foundation would then match that with a with a matching contribution so that's one of the ways and i guess uh, it then becomes as diverse as you want to want to from there through to um, initiatives uh, for um, you know supporting the environment and getting uh, older australians involved in environmental initiatives through to the indigenous kind of program again where providing support for volunteers to get them to some of the, uh, the really distant parts of the country. So yeah. good, uh, Foundation is a good initiative because it actually is about putting money back in. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us today, Michael. Um, if people would like to find out some more information about the NSA, how would they get in contact with you? Perhaps most simply, Amber, to go to the website, nationalseniors.com.au, or um, they can give us a call on 1300 76 50 50. Excellent. Again, thank you very much, Michael. Um, if you're looking for some more information, we'll also have um, some information on the NatChat website. Thanks for joining us this week and we'll see you again.